This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin self-custody made easy, and this is going to be a review of the hardware wallet called the BitKey. Some disclosures first, I'm not being paid by anyone to make this video. I bought my BitKey with my own money. Here's a summary. BitKey, I think, is a great solution for beginners. The probable marketing target for this is affluent, less tech-savvy people, I would say. I would also say it's not a great solution for hardcore cypherpunk types and those far down the Bitcoin rabbit hole who are trying to maximize self-sovereignty. But if you're not tech savvy and you're looking for an easy way to get your Bitcoin off the exchange, or you have a parent or grandparent or friend who is looking to do this, you should definitely check out the BitKey. I think it'd make a great gift for a lot of people. This is what it looks like. It's a very attractive looking hardware wallet. It's very solid when you hold it in your hand. As we said, it's a hardware wallet solution from Block, which is Jack Dorsey's company, formerly known as Square. It's a two of three multi-sig solution, which makes it very interesting. And that means you need to sign with two out of the three keys in order to move your Bitcoin out of the wallet. One key is held encrypted on your phone. One key is held on the BitKey hardware device itself, which you have in your possession. And one key is held on a Block or BitKey server. BitKey holds only one key, so they can't rug you. They would need to sign with two keys in order to steal your Bitcoin. And your phone, your smartphone, and the BitKey hardware device communicate using NFC. I'll put a link in the description notes below to this. So you can see how the different keys function, the mobile key, the hardware key, and the server key. The recovery methods are also quite interesting. So it's possible to recover your Bitcoin if you lose your phone or you need to replace your phone. It's possible to recover if you lose your hardware device. And it's also possible to recover if you lose both your phone and your hardware device. And you do this using trusted contacts, which I'll show you when we're inside of the app. So it's got a very interesting model. It's quite different from most recovery services, but this makes it very good for beginners as well. And I'll put a link to their recovery design philosophy in the description notes below. I'll also put a link to how to set up the BitKey wallet. It's very easy to set up. You basically download the BitKey app on your phone and then you just follow the prompts and at various points you'll need to uh, put your fingerprint, put your finger on the hardware device and then hold your hardware device next to your phone at the back of your phone so it can communicate using NFC. It's very, very easy to set up. It's a little bit like an Apple product in this way where you don't need a manual and you don't really need instructions. So let's go inside the app and take a quick look at what it looks like. We can see the user interface is very clean, very nice. You have send, receive, and add. Add is for if you want to buy some Bitcoin. So you can purchase it here using, let's say we bought it by $100 worth, and it will allow you to purchase it using, coin, uh, using Cash App or Coinbase. I don't recommend doing this. The fees are pretty outrageous, something like, at least for Cash App here, 1.7% uh, fees, which is pretty crazy. The other way, though, you can just get Bitcoin in here is you just receive it. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Let's just look at the settings briefly. Uh, we have the different, you can change your currency, you can check out where your cloud backup is, and here's where you add trusted contacts, maybe friends or family members that can aid in the recovery device and confirm that it really is you. So that's where you add those. Then there's a nice setup here where it allows you to take your phone and use it to pay people Bitcoin using the BitKey app and not having to bring your hardware wallet alone. And the way they do this, if you just click on mobile pay here, you turn this on. Um, Let's read what it says. First, leave your device at home and make so small spends with just the key on your phone. So you can set the limit here. I think the most you can set it is $200. And then when you set this limit, that will allow you to spend $200 worth of Bitcoin from this app every single day, but not more than that, unless you pair it with the hardware wallet. And so this allows you to take your phone, you can do have some spending money, and you don't have to worry about your stash, your full stash, your full savings being accessed. Uh, because if you have thousands and thousands of dollars, the most, if someone were to get access to your phone, the most they could drain out is $200 a day. And by then you could have done a recovery and moved it elsewhere. So that's basically the settings. If we go back to the home screen, it's very clean. As we said, you can add Bitcoin that way. The better way to add it though is to buy it using Strike or River or Swan Bitcoin. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that using Strike, for example. Right now, we'll just click Receive. We'll copy this Bitcoin address. We'll go over to Strike. We'll click Send. We'll click Bitcoin Wallet. We'll click Paste. And let's send over uh, 30,000 uh, sats, which is about $20 right now. 
click next we'll do priority and continue okay so that's being sent over and while we're waiting for that we can go back here and take a look I already have as I said 50,000 sats there which is settled now I also want to show you how to send sats out of this wallet so let's go back to strike let's generate a receive address we'll go to Bitcoin wallet we want to do an on-chain payment we'll click copy we will go back to BitKey. we're going to click send and we will paste from the wallet click continue we're going to do 40,000 sats which is currently about 27 dollars and we can see here that, here that we're going to need to sign with two out of the three keys we'll need to sign with the mobile key the mobile phone key and then we'll need to sign with the hardware wallet itself by holding it against it we'll click continue we'll load the fees I'm going to do this priority just because we want to get it done quickly for this video we'll click uh, 10 minutes which tries to get us in the next block and then we will click send now we need to unlock our hardware device here I'll just put my finger on it until the light turns green now I'm just going to hold it to the back of my phone so it can scan it looks like it scanned it okay now it's initiating the transfer transfer sent and we go back to the home screen we can see right here that it's sending out 40,000 sats there's the network fee and then what I'm going to receive back at strike so that's basically how it works we can see it's a very nice interface very easy to use if you're enjoying this video so far i just ask you to help to support the channel click the subscribe button leave a like leave a comment suggestion topic for a future video and share this video with a friend or family member so let's talk about the pros and cons of the bit key i would say the pros are it's bitcoin only which is great so it has a smaller attack surface than crypto wallets in general like a trezor or a ledger it's also very easy to use for, for beginners as you will see if you get one it has viewable software code that anyone can audit so you can't use it commercially it's not truly FOSS but you can view it and make sure that no one's going to rug you and there are a lot of eyeballs on this code I can imagine even if you yourself don't read code also another pro is it's a beautiful solid device cons too expensive for some people as we're going to see we'll go over the prices can be paired only with a phone and not a laptop. This is not really a con for most people who like using their phone these days more than their laptop or desktop, but this could be one con if you like using a larger screen and like having your laptop. Also, another uh, another downside is you're trusting BitKey's node when you interact with the Bitcoin blockchain. There is a way to set this up using your own Electrum server, but I don't really see that as an option for people. If you know how to set up your own Electrum server for Bitcoin, for your Bitcoin node, then you probably don't need a BitKey. You just use a regular hardware wallet like the cold card. But in this case, this is more of a beginner's device, so they allow you to use BitKey's node to interact with the Bitcoin network. Also, you have zero privacy when you use BitKey. BitKey servers can presumably see everything that you do, and they know your email address, which you give them when you set it up. They know your Google Drive account or your iCloud Drive account, as well as every single Bitcoin transaction that you've done every single Bitcoin address that you interact with. It'd be a question uh, to research whether they share this data at all or whether they just use it internally. Even if they don't share the data today, the company could evolve to the point where they end up sharing your data down the line. So this is one downside. And this is one problem when you're a beginner, you do end up usually giving up more privacy. And then when you, when you become more advanced, you learn some of the privacy tools. Another thing I don't really like about the BitKey is it does not have a screen, which makes it impossible to verify Bitcoin addresses and the amounts being sent. Most hardware wallets have these screens, so you can double check the amounts being sent and the Bitcoin uh, address that you're sending to you can trust you can check the whole thing or check the beginning and the end so in this case you are forced to trust the big key software on your phone and trust also that it hasn't been compromised with a bad update another problem there's no coin control there's no utxo management or labeling and so you can't really choose which which chunk of bitcoin to send uh, when you're sending it out and this can have implications as we've talked about in other videos on UTXO management. Also this fingerprint sensor, I'm not a huge fan of fingerprinting, probably the same fingerprint you're using to unlock your phone as well as the BitKey device. And so this could be used by an attacker to basically push your finger on the BitKey and make you open it up. I'm also not a big fan, of, as I said, of voluntarily sharing biometric data with big tech at any time, even if it is theoretically 
held encrypted locally on your phone. You just never know about these things. The other thing about this is it doesn't really teach you the classic recovery seed method with Bitcoin. Maybe that is a later step when you become a little bit more advanced, but you don't get to store your Bitcoin using 12 words in your head in this case. Of course, you can't do that with regular multi-sig either. Is it really self-custody if you only control one key and it's not even backed up by 12 words? I think it is in this case, but you are making various trade-offs in the interest of having a more uh, yeah, beginner experience and easy, uh, easy UX. Two out of the three keys that you sign with as well could be considered hot keys in my opinion because one is held on a mobile device on your phone. The other is held on BitKey's servers. And we know you should be very careful storing private keys online. This is not normally a super secure method of doing it. In this case, they're in uh, they're sort of geographically dispersed or they're on different, uh, different servers or different uh, devices. But still, this isn't, I'd say this isn't best practice. This is a problem too. Uh, if you want to get really paranoid, if the CIA is able to grab either your BitKey device or your phone, just one of them, they could theoretically make a phone call to BitKey to block to force them to divulge the key held on their servers. They could get a law enforcement request. But again, the target audience of BitKey is not paranoid libertarians. I'd say it's people who aren't quite as worried about these things. I think the Bitcoin journey, especially the journey to self-custody goes something like this. You start off, you buy some Bitcoin, you finally decide you're gonna buy some. You end up leaving it on Coinbase or some other exchange. This of course is a really bad idea, not your keys, not your coins. Just the other day, we had about $300 million of Bitcoin stolen from a Japanese exchange. And so this still happens all over the world. This is the main way that people lose their Bitcoin, leaving it on exchanges, leaving it on apps. But the Bitcoin journey will continue. The important thing is just to start at the beginning and buy some Bitcoin. Maybe you, you leave it on the exchange at first, like I did, but then you decide to take it into self-custody. And I'd say the BitKey is a really great way of beginning this self-custody journey. And especially if you're a beginner or you know a beginner, we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, as I like to say, because using a BitKey is infinitely better than leaving your Bitcoin on an exchange or on a custodial app. And then after using the BitKey for a couple months or a couple of years, you can always graduate to more advanced and self-sovereign solutions, the kind that I teach on this channel and that I also teach in my paid course and in my live classes as well. And it looks something like this. You run your own Bitcoin node using Bitcoin Core or Knots on your laptop, or you use a Start9 Bitcoin uh, set up, Bitcoin node set up. You pair it with Sparrow Wallet, and then you pair your hardware device, either a cold card or a Blockstream Jade, these Bitcoin-only devices, which are so good, you pair them with Sparrow. Sparrow helps them to talk with the Bitcoin network using your node. Another version would be the Start9 Bitcoin node plus the Sparrow Wallet, plus a multi-sig setup where you have three hardware wallets from different vendors. And I think this is much more secure than something like the BitKey uh, from a self-sovereign point of view. The BitKey is also not cheap, as we said. You can either buy it for $150 one-time fee. This includes the trusted contacts and the recovery tools, or you can pay just $99 and then a two-month subscription. And this will eventually, if you keep it long enough, will obviously add up to being more than $150. But this isn't the cheapest device around. If you want something like that, you can get the Blockstream Jade, which you can get for only $64, $65. So that's the more budget route. And then my favorite hardware wallet would be the cold card, the Mark IV, which is one I really like, $160. So it's not cheap as well, but this is really the more self-sovereign way of doing it. I'll put a link in the description notes below to both of these sites if you wanna buy one. I'm not being paid or compensated in any way. You should definitely buy directly from the maker of it. Sparrow Wallet is a free software download. You can choose your operating system. And if you wanna be extra paranoid, as I teach in my course, you can learn how to verify the release. You can check the manifest signature. You can check the hash etc. If you want to do it yourself, I have two videos which I'll link to in the description notes below how to set up the Sparrow wallet and how to pair it with a hardware wallet like the Blockstream Jade or the cold card and then also how to move some Bitcoin onto that wallet after you've done that. If you want a more hand-holding version of it, you can check out my paid course where I teach you how to create your own Bitcoin multi-sig vault using three different wallets, three different hardware wallets from the three different hardware wallet manufacturers. This is what I call the do-it-yourself multi-vendor, multi-sig, 
and this is my favorite way to store Bitcoin. I think this is really where your Bitcoin journey should get you at some point. And then also, if you become a member of Bitcoin University Premium, you can also check out all the live classes. I do a new live class every month, as well as having recordings up here of previous classes. And I believe it was this March class where we really did an in-depth on single SIG and multi-sig. Most recently, we did uh, a class on coin join, which is very interesting if you want to learn how to still do coin joins without no, without having access to Wasabi Wallet or Samurai Whirlpool anymore. There is a very cool way of doing it. So this is really more advanced stuff when you're ready to really go deeper down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. But I would still say that Bit BitKey is a great gift, would be a great gift for someone who's new to Bitcoin in your family or a friend, and it really gets them started on their Bitcoin journey. And then later on in their journey, you can graduate to more advanced setups. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.